Hello and welcome to Web of Light. I'm Dr. Kevin. And I'm Angie Danju. And we're doing another one of our Share One of the Talks from the Web of Light Expo. Uh, our Web of Light Expo uh, in April of 2017, we had over 30 presentations. Uh, we've shared Angie's talks. We shared the talk that you and I did together on how to choose a spiritual teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Dorothy share her talk on Venus, yes. warrior, uh, lover or warrior goddess. Mm -hmm. uh, and today, we're going to be sharing another one of the talks. And I think you're up now. Yeah, because this talk that you're going to be getting a, a part to look and glimpse at is one of my, actually one of my favorite talks. And although I didn't see this talk at this past expo because it's pretty busy, I have seen this talk in past expos that I've attended with Dr. Kevin. And um, it's a very wonderful and very, uh, I, I want to say that you'll get a lot of information from this um, it's in regards to ADD and ADHD and what that truly is. And Dr. Kevin, I know, has been in that field and working with ADD, ADHD for many a year. And uh, so if you were to say one sentence of, you know, what to look at when you work with ADD, ADHD, what would it be? Uh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. And whether it's a TV interview, a radio interview, or a live talk, I always tell people, if there's nothing else I can have you walk away with, I want you to walk away with this thought. ADD and ADHD are part of the evolutionary process, broadening the bandwidth of humanity. They are not a disease, disability, or illness. If I can get people to understand that this is just a natural occurrence and moving forward of part of humanity, then we will stop making it a disability. We will stop disabling these people by not finding the correct solutions for them to manage the gifts that come with this, along with the challenges. As you know, my books have been called Managing the Gift Something, my DVDs, all of my work all started with that one simple statement that I made to one of my very earliest ADD clients, and that this is a gift. And it is a gift, but gifts can be curses mm -hmm. if you don't know how to manage them. So there's my one thought. And that was put very wonderfully. And so I'm really going to tell people, pay attention, watch the entire piece, and we'll return after you have a little time of viewing Dr. Kevin discussing ADD, ADHD. So first of all, I do have several different books, DVDs, CDs. I have a couple of them with me now. I will shamelessly self-promote them as we start this and we talk about it. My first book is called Managing the Gift, Alternative Approaches for Attention Deficit Disorder. And that book came out in 2000. I started working with ADD in the late 90s. I am gonna actually tell you that story because it's an important story. And as some of you who have now heard me three, two, three times, um, my loyal followings, followers here, um, they know that I like to teach with storytelling. It's part of how I communicate. I can just give it to you straight up in your face, but that's usually with like a Nerf bat or something. So I just figure I'll just tell stories today. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but, and when it first came out, Managing the Gift Alternative Approaches for Attention Deficit Disorder, I was uh, the uh, butt of every joke for traditional uh, providers to the ADD community. The AMA people laughed at me. The APA people laughed at me. Uh, I've been called every bogus name in the book by traditional Western medicine and all of that stuff for the work, and that I call it a gift. Since that time, in the last 17 years since the book has come out, probably about two-thirds of stuff that I said, specifically of this or that or whatever, maybe not quite two-thirds, but a good chunk of it, 
has come out in different people's books and different, and the scientific community has, community has proven or now thinks that people who are ADD are more creative. Oh, well, you know, I said that 15 years before you said it, and you make it sound like it's news. When you work in the alternative health and healing field, when you are out there and you are dealing with the fact that you don't need to have a dozen bogus studies that are being underwritten by the pharmaceutical companies that take out the information they want so you'll buy their drugs, it's a whole different story. And they don't like my story at all. And yes, I do call it managing the gift, and I do see it as a gift. And we are going to get to that as well. This is a CD that's got daily practices, uh, exercises on it. So it's not the book on CD, but actually how to do an emotional coffee break. And we're going to explain what that is in a minute. How to do shielding and protection for yourself and how to organize your brain at the beginning and at the end of every day. And you can listen to it and you can do that until you get it so it's just part of your thought process. Much later, I came up with managing the gift of your ADHD child. Uh, you know, and a lot of people think that that is. So we have two visuals and an audio and another visual. Managing the gift of ADHD, three discs. This is almost four hours of me teaching in San Francisco live about all of my information and stuff like that. These are all available in the information booth. But I want to point that out. And then I do have a few e-books um, out there. And I want to even go into those. So um, my journey with ADD very quickly started uh, when I, my book, Coming the Mirror and Other Steps in Your Spiritual Path, had just come out. I was doing a uh, Maine to Florida and back book signing. I had no awareness of ADD, had not crossed my field. Uh, I'm getting ready to leave in a, less than two weeks. I have a practice. I'm seeing clients in my Portland office and my Portsmouth office. Yes, I was running two offices as a spiritual catalyst coach and counselor. Okay, so for those of you out there who ever wonder if you could ever do a spiritual alternative business and make it successful, after 27 years, I think one might call my business successful. And yes, you can. Uh, and so I'm there. I have an office in Portland, Maine. I have an office in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. One of my clients comes in on a Friday afternoon, makes a big announcement. He's been looking on the internet. He's been researching stuff. He thinks he has ADD. He's pretty sure. And his wife agrees. I'm doing marriage coaching counseling, spiritual coaching counseling with this couple. They hit a little snag because he retired. Now we're talking again, 1998, 98, late 98. The man in front of me is 65 years old, has just retired. And it's, it's causing enough problems that his second marriage, a 25-year marriage, is on the rocks because she, now she has to put up with him. Well, that happens in the non-ADD community as well. <laughs> but one of the ways he managed his ADD was to be a workaholic, so she didn't have to deal with him much. <laughs> he tried rageaholic and alcoholic before that and went through those phases with ADD and moved on to workaholic which is one of the, the, the least supported, that's actually an addiction, addictions out there. Because <laughs> when you're a workaholic, especially if you're making a lot of money, they just call you successful, <laughs> right? They don't call you an addict. They call you sir, no, um, <laughs> or ma'am. Who likes to be called ma'am here? Only you, Matt? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Only a formal situation. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I said, okay, and I had knew nothing about this ADD. And I did what I called a, a, a mini medical intuitive scan, which is one of the things I've been doing. I've been doing professional psychic work since the late 70s. I got more tools on my tool belt than you can count. And I was like, okay. And I kind of like perceived him. And I went, oh, it must hurt to be in your head. You never stop thinking. He said, well, I never thought about it that way, but I think you're right. But isn't that what everybody's head does? I'm like, oh, no, no, not like that. You know, it's okay. I mean. You can have 500 planes a day landing in LaGuardia, but you can't have them all in the same hour. <laughs> Every hour, 500 planes. Right? So I look at it, I was like, okay, now I understand. Now I understand when you do this, when she says this, you don't get this because this is this. And they're both looking at me, and I see this like unfolding of understanding because I could start to understand that he thought differently, that she thought she was saying, Honey, please move the chair. And he was hearing blah, 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 the chair. I'm supposed to do something with that chair. Hmm. 
Was it move it? Was it upholster it? Maybe she wanted me to throw it away. You know, I kind of like that chair. Maybe we could put it. You know what? I could do so. And three hours later, the chair wasn't moved, and he was still contemplating what he could do with it. Sound familiar, anyone? <laughs> OK. So but I had that one session, and, and I mean, it was, a, it was a killer session. And I'm happy to say the couple is still married today, and still going strong, and he's still ADD. Because uh, it doesn't go away. I want to dispel some myths in this talk. You do not catch ADD. You, don't, you do not get it later in life. Um, you don't develop it. You don't get it from drinking Ovaltine. You don't get it from playing video games. And you don't outgrow it. You will never outgrow it. You won't outgrow it. You just have to adjust to the fact that it's a gift and it's something really great that you came in to change the world. I don't know, you know, some people are born to fit in. Some people are, st are born to stand out. Some people come here to follow and others come here to lead. If you were born with ADD, whatever your passion is, whatever gets you going, what wakes you up, what you get excited about, what you hyper-focus, because the ADD mind either, either multitasks or hyper-focus. It only has two settings. Middle one is missing. Okay? So whether you're, so if you got what you hyper-focus on, if you got your passion involved, you are here to create, recreate, co-create, change the world in the way that you do it, with your passion, with the way you see things and you do things. The establishment is going to hate you because you are here to replace them. <laughs> you are here to challenge them. Well, we've always done it that way. Boom! <laughs> if you've always done it that way, then there must be a better way to do it now because now wasn't 50 years ago. Go retire to Florida. Get out of my way. I'm trying to bring you innovation here. I'm trying to bring you a new way of doing and being. So... I worked with this guy on Friday. Um, of course, they're going to come back and continue to work with me. On Monday, I have somebody who has been a student of mine and a client of mine and, and was very involved with my business for a little bit. And she calls me, and she's really upset. And she goes, could you help my son? Now, for anybody here do spiritual work, by the way, do some kind of what they can do, spiritual work. We want to always say yes. And what we need to say sometimes is, or every time. I don't know. I, I would like to. I want to. I will do my best. But don't make false promises. Because sometimes we are not the person to help somebody. Sometimes we may point them to the person to help somebody. Um, and so I said, I don't know. What's going on? Tell me. Well, he's 11 years old. The school says he cannot come unless we medicate him because he has ADD. Very common back then. It's still common today in some school systems. Um, and he says he won't take medication. I said, you have, to, you, you have to go to school. He goes, I'll run away from school. He goes, well, we'll find you and we'll have to, you have to go back. It's law. He goes, then I'll run away from home. And he goes, uh, th so he's going to run away from school. I'll run away from home. And he goes, and she goes, then we'd have to find you and you, you have to go to school. And he goes, then I will kill myself. Because I see what my friends look like who have been medicated, and I would rather be dead. And so she came in, and she brought him in. And I get to sit with this 11-year-old. And I remember, I, 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 it's got to be one of the top 10, 15 times in my life that I was so angry, I couldn't stand it. I came out of that office, and I said to her, this is not a disability. This is a gift. Don't you dare let them do that to that child. It was like watching somebody who was born without energetic skin. He felt everything. He saw everything. He, and in fact, I went on to work with this child. We kept him off medication. But the system kept pushing back and pushing back against this child. I can't tell you how many times I had to go fight teachers and school boards and all sorts of things. We actually got an approval for his science project in the sixth grade. This is what he wanted to do for his science project. I want to do a nutritional analysis of what they're serving us in the cafeteria. Sixth grade. 
Now, again, remember, the year we're talking is 1998. Not everything that's available today was available back then. He did a nutritional evaluation uh, of uh, analysis of what they were getting in the cafeteria. And he concluded by said, the only thing I conclude, conclude by what I found is that they're trying to poison us. He was not wrong. He was suspended for that. He was suspended for doing that project. He was suspended because it was too good and it was too right. That's what he was suspended for. They, not the brightest decision, they invited the cafeteria ladies to his presentation. <laughs> and they didn't know that they were poisoning the students, <laughs> but they were. Actually, a few years later, they made changes in that cafeteria to what they were serving. They actually used his information, but they still suspended him. They never gave him, gave him credit for it. And then they got even more insistent that he be medicated because he was a problem. I could stay the next five hours and tell you about the kids and the adults I've worked with and the stories. Some are even more heart-wrenching than the one I just told you. But what I can tell you is that, the aid, that doing that, working with that kid, and, and then I, I, I went to go back to my story. I went on the road for six weeks to do a book signing for Combing the Mirror and Other Steps in Your Spiritual Path. I, would go, I was going up and down. I was doing Barnes and Nobles. I was doing Borders. I was doing Walden Books. And I was doing Holistic Healing Centers. And I was doing book signings to talk about this other book. And I'd be there. And I'd say, do you have any questions? And somebody would raise their hand. I remember this um, on the, uh, at the Beltway uh, between Baltimore and Washington being at a place there. And, and we were doing an outdoor event, and this woman raised her hand, and she said, can you tell me anything about ADD? Now, she didn't know that I just had these two experiences five days earlier, six days earlier. It wasn't anywhere on my website. It wasn't anywhere in my presentation materials. That happened at least a half a dozen times when I was on that road trip. People were coming and saying, do it. But I remember that woman really well, because she, came, because she said, you know, I see my child, and she's bright. It was a, her, it was a little girl. She's bright and she's creative and she just wants to dance and she just wants to paint and they tell me she's disabled and I need to medicate her. It breaks my heart. And I looked at that woman and I said, your child's not disabled. Your school system is broken. Your school system is broken and they will break your child if you let them. But you're the parent. Your job is to not let them break your child. I can't do that. And that was back in 1999, and in 2000, Managing the Gift came out. So since then, I have helped hundreds, if not thousands, of ADD kids, adults, business owners. The ADD person is 400% times more likely to become an entrepreneur. 400% times more likely. That's out of Inc. Magazine. Because all of the tools and skill sets it takes to be a successful entrepreneur is what the ADD mind has in, has in spades. Because they were born not to fit in. They were born to stand out. They were not born to follow. They were born to lead. They will follow as long as you engage their intention their attention, they will follow. And they will take everything you've got and they will make it better. Which we should celebrate and happy dance about. But unfortunately, there are those with a human nature that see that as a competition, as a challenge to authority. I had one, I had uh, Alexander, I will always remember Alexander sitting in my big wing back chair, six years old, stretching his hands out as far as he could so he could put his hand on each one, looking at, looking at me, talking to Dr. Kevin. And, and Alexander would come in and sit down, and he'd look at his mother and he'd go, you may leave now, mother. We'll let you know when we're done. <laughs> that was Alexander. But Alexander's teacher comes and say, you've got to medicate him, you've got to medicate him. And I come and say, why, why, why? Finally, what came out was he was asking questions that they weren't going to get to until the fifth grade. And he wouldn't stop asking them until he got his answers. And the teacher, you know, said it disrupted the class and that he wasn't, he wasn't behaving because he wanted to know the answer. Let me tell you what Alexander thought was happening. 
the teacher was, yeah, he was asking the teacher the question, questions that she didn't know the answer to. And that she got mad with him and upset because she was embarrassed because she couldn't answer his questions. And he felt really bad about embarrassing his teacher, but he really wanted to know. This is what the six-year-old thought. What the teacher thought was, when I say that's not a right question, you need to shut up and sit down. That's how the teacher wanted to handle it. Now, not all teachers are bad. There are fabulous teachers out there. I've worked with them. I've done in-services. I, I am not making anybody have a black hat here in the ADD, ADHD market except the pharmaceutical companies. They have a big black hat, and they have a lot of influence, and they have a lot of doctors trained that the prescription pad is the only solution. And many of those doctors are just ignorant. I've gone back and given people information to take back to their doctor that doctor didn't even know about the drugs they were giving their kids because they just believe what the pharmaceuticals tell them. So now we're going to go through a little bit. So that was a little bit about how I got involved and why I might have a thing or two to say about it. Um, when people have said, because my, I got my doctorate, this, this actually is my doctorate thesis made into a book at the time. Uh, and my doctorate is in divinity, so it's not real, according to a lot, you know, people with PhDs and MDs, it's not a real doctorate. And that's all right, because they're not real people to me, so it washes out. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, but, so there's a few things that I'm going to download kind of, kind of quickly. Um, and if you are here with your uh, ADD friend or your ADD child or whatever and it's going too fast, just ask them later because they will have gotten it and you're just slow. Uh, <laughs> 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 we got you covered. Don't worry about it. We'll let you know what he said. Okay. So uh, I, one more quick little story. So what I did realize in looking back in my own history that when I was six years old, when I was in the first grade, they actually wanted to put me in a class for the mentally retarded. And my father went in and fought for me. And he came to the conclusion, I won't tell you the whole story, but he, I, I'll tell you some other time if you want to hear it. But, but he came to the conclusion and said to them, the problem is not that Kevin is a slow child. It is that you do not have a teacher that knows how to teach a bright child. And he proved it and shoved it down their throat. But my father was the exception to the rule. This was 1966. And when the school system said something, you said, yes, sir. People weren't challenging back then like they did now, like, like they do now. So, um, so I was very lucky. They, uh, I, would, I would have, to, to, till today, I would have files that would say I was mentally retarded if he had allowed that. Do I sound mentally? Do I, do I sound stupid? Uh, anyways, so ADD is part of the evolutionary process broadening the bandwidth of humanity. It is here to expand humanity, and it is actually an evolutionary process. And part of what I go over in Managing the Gift is that we have improvements and adjustments in each level of, of the human nature body. So, we, so I talk about impacts on a physical level, an emotional level, intellectual level, and a spiritual level. Those impacts come in because we as a human race were failing in those areas or they were not maximizing who we were. We as an evolutionary species have been changing for thousands of years. And first, to evolve is either to change the environment or be changed by the environment. And in most, most cases, it's some of both. We change, we change the environment, then the environment changes us, and the cycle continues. So with the ADD, what started happening is we started seeing, as I can identify, that there's always been people throughout all of history who picked up history and turned it and went into another direction, an Aristotle or a Leonardo da Vinci. Um, a Ben Franklin, people that had that multi-talented, could think in lots of different ways, saw things differently. And so, but it wasn't a real evolutionary process because we didn't see an increasing number of it. It was almost like humanity had to catch up to the point where I started to look at it that probably in the mid-1700s, I say here the mid-1800s, but the more time I spent with it, because you know I wrote that book two years into it and now I'm 19 years into working with this population and these individuals. And I would say probably that many of our founding fathers today would have been qualified as ADD to some extent. Um, because one of the characteristics, and I'll be listing characteristics of ADD. You can write them down. You can think about them, whatever. I don't care. But I sometimes just do a checklist or I just throw them out. You guys are lucky. I'm just throwing them out. Um, 
So one of the things that is, that is common in most, if not all, of ADD is a naturally rebellious nature. Uh, there is a naturally rebellious nature because it is a high intellect that is curious and is going to always challenge. It learns by challenging. Now, when it challenges, and sometimes it can challenge over something pretty stupid, to be honest with you. And I say this as a poster child. I have been called the poster child for ADD, ADHD. I have no idea why. I don't think, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, but um, so that naturally rebellious nature is, it's the, I never grew out of why, why, why. And give me an answer, and I will come back with another why. Um, but if you interact, and when, I talk, when I've taught parents about how to deal, especially with a small ADD child, I'm like, start at three or four. You engage in negotiations. You just engage in negotiations with them. You talk to them. You let them be part of the decision. You keep giving them information until they're at a point where you can see that they're starting to get a little overwhelmed, and then say, OK, so let's work out some solutions. How do we make this happen? You give them the hard bars. This has to happen. But I'm, I'm open for any creative problem solving within here. So you and I together are going to find the solutions to my school issues or my home issues or stuff like this. I'm making you semi-responsible. That's what needs to happen with that child. And they very much need to learn action and consequences. But you cannot have any emotional attachment when you have to give, an attach when you have to give a consequence. Look, you know what? If you close your eyes and run as fast as you can, and you hit a tree, you're going to end up with a headache, and you're going to up with, end up with falling down. You might get a black eye. You might get a concussion, all sorts of things done. I'm just telling you. So you might not want to run as fast as you can with your eyes closed into the forest. But if you do, that's what happens. If the rules of this household that you live in are basically that there are certain things that need to get done, and if I trust you to do them and you don't get them done, then there are certain things that you basically didn't create the currency to buy, like time on the video game, or time on TV, or with your iPad. Because that's how the world works. And my job as a parent is to teach you how the world works so you can be successful in that world. If I don't go to work, I don't get a paycheck, I can't pay that electric bill, I can't pay that credit card, you don't have an iPad. If you don't do this and this and this to support me, you don't have an iPad. Because that's how the world works. You can be telling that to ADD kids at five and six, and they will get it if you will tell them that. But telling them, I told you so, is a waste of your breath and their time, and they don't like their time wasted. Your breath they don't care about. <laughs> right? So this is really important to understand how this brain works. Sometimes if I do a slide presentation, I'll have a picture of, maybe you've seen a meme before, and it's a kid, and it's this kid, and he's got a bowl of spaghetti on his head, and he's about two years old, and he's laughing really joyously in the spaghetti and the sauce. Have you seen that? It went around the Facebook for a while, internet. The kid with the spaghetti, and I go, that is your ADD kinesthetic learner. If you give them a problem that they like, they have to roll around in it, they have to wear it, and so here is something, here's another thing. The ADD mind thinks differently. In 1990, I used the term in this book that they do not have a disability, they have a diffability. They learn and process information differently. That term has been taken by lots of different places, but I don't remember any place before 1990 using it. But I'm not going to say I coined it. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't make any difference. So you think of a diffability. So I have different abilities. I interact with the world differently. And I have no control over what my brain wants. If my brain is feeling really creative, it is going to fight against anything but being creative. Now, some people would say, well, that's just a lack of self-discipline. And I say, well, you know, your face is just a lack of joy. <laughs> <laughs> because you can do it all if you do what? Come on now, audience participation. Yeah. Manage the, the gift, yes. So you have to say, well, these are the true things. So we know one true thing is they're going to be a rebel. They're going to be pushing against anything that doesn't make sense to them. Now, some things that don't make sense at all, they'll completely ignore because it didn't hit their radar. I have sat with, I have sat with a five-year-old that said that they were here to end war in this lifetime. It did not make sense to them. I have sat with a seven-year-old that has said that they were going to save the environment because they couldn't believe all the stupid people that were ruining it and getting away with it at seven. And, 
And some of these kids did not come from households that were making those statements at all. One came from a household that went hunting and had lots of guns. And this one was like, all guns have to be eliminated and I'm here to get rid of war. That's what I'm here to do. He also told me they remember, he remembered a past life getting killed in Vietnam and dying in a rice field. And his parents didn't believe in reincarnation. Okay. Yeah, him and, him and his parents and I had to have a couple of interesting conversations. <laughs> I kind of went up against their religious belief system. But you know, your child's important to you, so I think I won. Ah, <laughs> uh, anyways, so, um, so now you have the, the uber creative needs to kinesthetically interact, or, uh, interact with problems. They have to hit their radar screen as interesting. If what you're saying to the ADD, ADHD mind is not interesting, they will not hyperfocus, which is what they would prefer to do is be hyperfocusing on something. Now you may think that something that they are hyperfocusing on is stupid. That's all right. That's okay. Because they think you're stupid because you don't get it, so it's even. Sometimes their brain needs to hyperfocus into something, and I go over all this in the physical level about there are different energy patterns and the way they come through the body and why it is an evolutionary process and how it will make a more efficient body that is more productive in the long run if you understand what's going on. And I've identified a lot of different things. This is obviously a 45 minute talk. I'm not gonna get into all of it, but there it is. I mean, so we talk about that. And so sometimes they need to be engaged in something here because this is doing so much that if you tried to follow it around, you'd get seasick. And that's the way that they rest their conscious brain. It, for some of them, it can be a meditation. Now, for others, it can be a real problem. It depends on what kind of ADD you have. I actually had created an app uh, that identified 64 different kinds of ADD. They were the Dr. Kevin shades. And there were 64 shades. And the app used to produce like 25, 27-page report on how to deal with your child's shade of ADD. Unfortunately, the app developer went out of business and I didn't get the codes and Apple made a change and the app is no longer available. At some point, I'd like to get it back up because that would be very useful. And there's an adult version too. Um, but when that ADD mind does hyperfocus, and this is why they can manage the gift, they can get 40 hours of work done in four, maybe 10. But still, they can get an incredible amount done when they hyperfocus when it has given them a reason to engage. And sometimes the ADD mind can look like it's not paying attention to you at all, that they're completely somewhere else, and then suddenly they come in and they go, yeah, but you know, that doesn't make sense because of blah, 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 and you need to look at this, you need to blah, 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 okay, now I need to get back to my video game. <laughs> you go, I didn't even think they were listening. I hate it when they do that. <laughs> I have to think about my words ahead of time. That's no fair. Uh, okay, so we know highly intelligent, and we know that they are natural born problem solvers of one kind or another. When they see something that is a problem, when they get something they get interested in, they will get what I call an instant MBA level education on it within days or weeks if they really like, woo, I want to know about this. And as soon as they get that, then they will start to say, okay, so how can I make it better? What can I do? How can I recreate it? How can I do something with it? And then they have two natural urges, which is either to do all of that recreation and stuff or to teach it. They are natural born teachers. They get so excited about something. Let me tell you about this. Let me do this. So it's very important to understand that this brain needs to be engaged and interest has to be created for it. And when they are interested, they will engage and they can be left on their own. And so it's like a front, it's like a front loaded mutual fund. All the cost is up front. So if you spend a couple of hours with an ADD child or an adult really getting the value and understanding why it's important to them and why it could be interesting and you get them engaged, you can then let him go sometimes for years and never have to motivate him in that area again. Because they will be self-promoting, self-engaging until they reach a point where they go, not interested. I, I got where I wanted to go. And you know, one of the things that people say about ADD is, well, they don't finish anything. Well, they get to the point where they can see the end, and the end doesn't make any difference to them. I, I don't care. It has no value for me to spend two more days after you know, 500 days of analyzing, studying, working with something, 
In two more days, I can see what the answer is. And so now I want to do something else. This is boring. Well, you have to learn to finish things in life. All things? Really? We don't have to finish all things in life. If you're knitting a blanket, you can leave it for 10 years and go back and finish the last two rows and put the tassels on 10 years later. It's still a blanket, right? But you might have got three sweaters done in that time period. <laughs> Whatever. So in, in the ADD, you also have to find what, how do they, what is their secondary. So from a physical level, we know higher energy. We need to get them doing moving meditations. We need to get them to, to identify how their energy flows. And then when you do that, there are certain ways where they need to physically move through the world, which will support them, promote them, and move them forward. And it might be that they watch video games or you never put them in front of the TV. That they'll actually have a meltdown like you woke them in the middle of the night with a gun in their head if you interrupt them. And that's a good sign that they are not the kind of physical impacted ADD that should be doing that. Because that is detrimental to them. It's not the video game. It's the fact that they get a connection in a, uh, in a hyper-focused way where actually it, that whatever's going on brings them out of their own natural rhythm. And when that rhythm gets broken, it's actually painful for them. And so then there are solutions to that. Once you identify almost anything, excuse me, once you identify almost anything, uh, I forgot to get water. Um, there are solutions on how you can manage it, not change it, not stop it, not try to make, a, make it what your public education system wants it to be or what your corporate world place wants it to be or what a spouse wants it to be or a family member wants it to be but who they are, then you manage what it is to get them in that flow. So let's just take a second. Let me see. Some ADD people in the 20th century. Uh, let me see. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell. OK, without him, we'd have no phone. OK, uh, let me see. Albert Einstein. Uh, without him, we'd have no theory of relativity. Uh, Thomas Alva Edison, who um, at the age of 12 was deemed inappropriate for public education because he was too stupid to learn and went on and created 1,083 patents and changed the whole 20th century and how it functioned. Because that's what public education told him and told his mother. Okay. The one thing I try to do whenever I do this workshop, whether it's you because you're dealing with a loved one that has ADD and you don't know how, or if you are sitting here with ADD, part of what I always try to do is I'm going to do my best to get rid of all of those false negative belief systems. All of them, every last one. I'm going to pound the crap out of them as much as I can. Because if you just go out of here and somebody says, well, they're ADD, and you say, oh, how lucky. I'm a little jealous. Do you know how bright they must be? Do you know how creative they must be? Let me see. Warren Buffett, ADD. Oh, yeah, no, I don't want to be a multi-billionaire. No, that's, that's crap. I'd, I'd rather be working as a factory worker or, or be in a draught at a, a cool. Who wants, to, who wants to be that? Who, who, who wants to be Steve Jobs? Who wants to be Michael Phelps and win 18 gold medals? No, I don't want any of that. That's bad stuff. I, I'm, I want to be a droid that goes through the world being perfect to what corporate America and the government wants me to be. So highly intelligent, highly creative. creative. That creativity may come out in a number of different ways. And a lot of times they'll play with it. Sometimes they become hyper-focused on something like music um, you know, uh, or dance or whatever. And, and they need to run that out. But even in balancing that, they will reach a point where there are other things that they want to equally hyper-focus on. But they still have to find them. And they have to work around with them. Um, Justice-oriented, ADD is justice-oriented. Um, they Now, it's so funny. It's only if it comes in their attention field. But the ADD child or adult, and I, and I keep on using children as an example, but one thing about ADD I should say right now, they will always be childlike. A true ADD will never grow up. Not going to happen. And the reason why is they will never fully lose their innocence. They will never really get why we do the horrible, stupid things we do as humans. They may get that we do them, 
but they'll never really get them. And unless they become medicated or apathetic or an addict of some kind where they disengage and basically numb up their own mind, you know, drug them up and dumb them down. He's in first grade and he's going over fifth grade course material. So what do we do? We give him drugs so then he can be a first grader and a zombie. Okay? And so now there are things, so with this, there are things we can do um, with diet. I talked about diet in here. There are daily exercises you can do to manage your own gift of ADD. And yes, some people choose medication and you know, I will work with somebody that's medicated for a brief period of time if the goal is to get off medication. If somebody says, no, I'm on medication for life, I will not take them for a client. You can't write me a check big enough. Because there has to be a deep desire that says, I am willing to do the work to be who I'm here to be. And that medication cuts off all of the edges. It just does. They're not as creative. They're not as brilliant. They don't see things in as many multi-spectral colors. They just don't. I can very confidently say this after 20 years of working with children and adults, that the medication comes at a cost. The medication is trying to make you normal so you fit in with other people. You have to do the work that says, okay, I have some things I need to put in place. I have some systems I need to put in place. When I go and work with an ADD, HD entrepreneur, one of the first things I do, and, I, and I've worked with, with heads of multi-million dollar companies that have ADD, HD, first thing I do is I find out whoever their personal assistant is, or if they don't have one, I hire them, a key person with a, an entrepreneur that's not that big. It may be a spouse or a business partner or, or whatever. And I learn the ADD person's language and I teach it to their assistant. So their assistant knows how to talk to them in the way that they can hear it. I worked with this one guy, he um, had a million, multi-million dollar company, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he had bought the company and he was just starting to run it and he had never run a company before. And I had to find him an assistant to go in there and we're meeting and the guy really trusted me and we had done some work privately before we bought the company and things like this. And he would just speak without thinking and he doesn't, and the thing is ADHD people are almost consistently empathetic. They will, they will, they do need to shield. They will pick up the energy and the emotions on other people. It will confuse them with their own emotional body, which works much differently. I referred to coffee breaks in here. The ADHD emotional body works much differently. And that's why I created emotional coffee breaks. Um, but what it will do is it will pick up other people's emotions around them and not be able to tell the difference between the emotions that are theirs and the emotions that are others. One of the ways that an ADD person that became very successful, that becomes very successful has learned to deal with it is by literally becoming so disconnected from every human around them that they come across as hard and cruel and uncaring, but they're just trying to communicate what's in their head that they know. And if they open up and engage, that gets, that, that literally gets drowned by everything they're feeling. So they are so shut down that they are considered, you know, there's a few words I'd say, but we have a couple of children in the world and I won't. I said words. You don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> she said words. <laughs> um, no, but you know, the, the people who work for him basically, you know, were like, because I, I went and did the whole company evaluation. They're like, he's such a bastard. And I'm like, he's really not. Because when anything really bad went on with one of his employees, and he would hear, and it wasn't him trying to communicate his head. He did fabulous things for his employees, one-on-one, -on -one, separately, secretly to the side, when it wasn't in the flow of his day. But when we first were setting it up, I said, he doesn't send out any emails without you reading them. He was like, Arr. I said, and you manage his schedule, and only people get in, and you keep the time for him. This is what your job is. This man makes a lot of money. That's what he's hired you for. I said, and if he goes out of his office to tell somebody something and he hasn't talked it out with you first, I want you to order a case of duct tape right over his lips, turn him around, push him right in the office and say, I'm going to call Dr. Kevin on you. <laughs> Within a few months, they had a beautifully working relationship. And we really raised the morale of that whole company. And it's very successful today. I, I made a key executive 
fire somebody who basically refused to adjust to their style. No, you got to do it the way I want it. I'm like, you, you're gone. I've been here 20 years. I don't care. You're gone. Clear her desk out. She's gone now. Because guess what? He is the multi-million dollar maker. And if your little tight, mm, bond hair needs your accounting in this way, and he can only bring it in paper bags, you old bag, you'll learn to deal with it. Or you're out of here. How many people believe that I actually said that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, oh, we're out of time. So here's some stuff I want to leave you with. I have tons of YouTube videos. I put out a lot of information. You can go to Dr. Kevin and Friends Network, uh, which is my uh, internet TV station, thanks to Matt Connerton of IPM Nation, who's sitting in the back of the room. He, he is now making the world suffer by having me on air 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> Footage that goes back 25 years sometimes. You would see me with long blonde hair. You look like a rock star back in the day. <laughs> yeah. No, I just kind of look like a rock. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is a ton of stuff that I put out that you can review and do that. And then obviously you can, you know, like, you know, dig in, take a couple of shekels, buy my stuff, but that's okay. You don't have to. As long as you communicate the stuff. You can watch it. It's on, it's on YouTube. It's on my stations. It's all over the place. But I want you to remember these few things. ADD is a gift, and it is part of the evolutionary process. These are very bright, highly creative, energetic individuals who do think and process information differently. Because it is different does not make it bad. And because they are here to destroy a system which is no longer working for us does not make it bad. And in fact, we should probably encourage most, more of them. These are people that have changed the world since the beginning of time. But at that point, there was just one or two every 100 years. Now we get one or two a day being born. And so it is now an evolutionary process. And it is to broaden the bandwidth of humanity, which is not to replace it, but to give it dimensionality it never had. And the reason it has come now to us is because humanity spent a couple thousand years just not getting died out by, by stupidity and other things that early caveman and I mean, it's amazing we survived as a species, right? Come on. Come on. We do stupid better than any other species out there. And we do brilliant better than any other species out there. But we do stupid better than any other. The way, the way in fact, we even survived is amazing. These are our kids. These are our futures. Um, and again, it's kids of all ages. Absolutely. My guy is now in his late 80s that came to me originally. And he's out there. So they're out there to change the world. But they do need tools, techniques, and ideas to manage them. And it has to be somewhat, you know, I almost didn't want to make the app. Because I was like, I don't have a, a one-size-fits-all application. I'm not like an Adderall pill. OK? I'm not. Fascinating thing. Adderall used to be called Obertrol. Obertrol was a weight loss designer drug in the 70s. It was taken off the, tr off the market for addictive properties. It was so addictive that it was taken off as a designer drug. The patent was sold to another drug company that released it five years later as Adderall and started feeding it to our kids. And most of the medical doctors I know don't even know that as they're prescribing this highly addictive medication to five-year-olds. And they don't have a clue. OK? So they're here to change the world. We need to change it with them. We need to help them support them. They need to learn how to be self-managing. This is not about enabling them, and it's about holding them responsible. I hope that you have gotten something out of this today besides a good laugh. I never mind being laughed at. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your expo. Namaste. So welcome back. We're here um, coming back from you viewing the ADD, ADHD, fundamental uh, information with Dr. Kevin. I hope you enjoyed and get a lot of the information from that. And Dr. Kevin, I'm going to run this to you. Um, you know, what is most upsetting, or what is you know, what is the piece that you want to share with people at this time in regards to all that you have researched and done with ADD, ADHD? You know, the very interesting thing is, is I got involved in ADD. Uh, I was kidnapped by ADD. You've heard me say that before, um, back in 1998. And so at this point, 
I've been at this for 19 years, if I'm doing the math right. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a couple of things that do frustrate me and upset me. The first is that we have made our children laboratory rats with these medications. It's not unusual for a medication to get changed or adjusted three to five times. Sometimes we're talking kids that are four, five, six years old. They're still developing. Their bodies are still developing. We're told that there should, we're told by the official reports and studies, the majority of which are underwritten by pharmaceutical companies and are rubber stamped by the government, and I do mean rubber stamped, um, that there are no long-term side effects. When, the, when they say that based on a nine-month period of time. Okay, now I know many women who have said that being, that month, being pregnant for nine months, technically 10, um, is, feels like it's forever, but it's really not. And there were a lot of things I said in the late 90s um, and into the early 2000s that I was ridiculed for, that I was put down for, that I was, you know, uh, you, everything, because it came from a medical intuitive standpoint. Mm -hmm. And with each passing year, I see more things that I say get verified by the back door. Oh, they're more creative. Oh, they can be more energetic. Oh, they can be this. Oh, there's that. Um, and so it isn't about my work per se getting acknowledged. I can't say that I'm so above all of that, that it doesn't irritate me when I see suddenly some medical journal makes a statement that they could have taken out of my book that I wrote 10 years ago or 20 years ago, and then suddenly give it validity because they've decided they had it. But the fact that we're still having all of the long-term side effects, all of the bad stuff getting buried, getting hidden, mm -hmm. and that our government looks the other way, that we don't respect things that weren't done and underwritten and, and basically screwed with by the pharmaceuticals. I had a neurobiologist who would read these studies and point out all of the points of failure or things they didn't report that would have led any rational parent to say, you want me to put my child on that medication? Or why? And how it all got buried and it got hidden and it's still happening. Mm -hmm. And now we are seeing long-term side effects, and those are crumbling up. But it's too late. Those kids' lives have been wasted, so profits could be made. So what's most frustrating? That's most frustrating, mm -hmm. because it's still going away. With just this morning, I had somebody contact me because they were getting ready to, to, to have, because she was getting ready to have her four-year-old son put on Adderall. Not that she was, but the parent was. And she was upset about it. But the fact that it still happens today, mm -hmm. knowing what we know, and that there's so much misinformation out there. And I'm the kook. Yeah. So that's what most frustrates me. Thank you for asking. That's a very fine point. And, you know, it's time for them to wake up. Um, it's, like you said, it's not only by what they call the kooks, but also the back door is now starting to realize a lot of what the kooks were saying is coming to fruit. Yeah. If you aren't okay with your child being used as a cash cow in the laboratory rat, make sure you look beyond the million dollar PR screw job you're getting from the pharmaceutical companies with the rubber stamp of our government. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of our show. We're, we're gonna end it. Namaste. <laughs>